Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to answer question number seven from the International A-Level Mechanics M1 January 2021 paper. Um, <clears throat> this question is about a helicopter which is hovering at rest above a horizontal ground at the point H. A parachutist steps out of the helicopter and immediately falls vertically and freely under gravity from rest for 2.5 seconds. His parachute then opens and causes him to immediately decelerate at a constant rate of 3.9 meters per second squared for t seconds where t is less than 6 until his speed is reduced to v meters per second. He then moves with this constant speed v meters per second until he hits the ground. While he is decelerating he falls at a distance of 73.75 meters and the total time between the instant when he leaves h and the instant when he hits the ground is 20 seconds. The parachutist is modeled as a particle. Find the speed of the parachutist at the instant when the parachute opens. So that's part A, finding the speed of the parachutist at the instant when the parachute opens. Okay, so now what we have here is a situation where the parachutist is jumping from the helicopter he's going vertically down so I'm going to take down as positive he's under a constant acceleration of gravity for the first two seconds so it's constant acceleration so we can use the Suvat equations because therefore constant acceleration and we know that he's going down so the gravitational force is 9.8 positive because he's going down I take down as positive now um, we have to find the speed of the parachutist we don't know how far he falls in those first 2.5 seconds um, no, we don't know how far it falls in those first 2.5 seconds. We know his initial speed is zero, and we have to find his final speed. Okay, his initial speed is zero because he falls from rest. Okay, from rest, he falls from rest. And the time he falls for is 2.5 seconds. So we, we can see we need to find V. We have U, A, and T. So this is a pretty simple one. V equals U plus A, T will suffice. So V, what we have to find, is equal to 0 plus 9.8 multiplied by 2.5. And that gives you his speed at the instant when the parachute opens. Okay, so you have 9.8 multiplied by 2.5. And that gives you 49 over 2, which is 24.5 meters per second. So that's the speed of the um, parachutists when his parachute opens, 24.5 meters per second. Okay, then it says part B, sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the parachutist from the instant when he leaves the helicopter to the, when he hits the ground. Okay, so we're going to have here our y-axis okay which is the velocity or the speed we're going to have our x-axis which is the time so this is the speed in meters per second and this is the time in seconds okay so he starts off from rest and he reaches a speed of 24.5 meters per second in 2.5 seconds so he starts off time equals zero from rest when he's standing in the helicopter and his speed reaches 24.5 meters per second in 2.5 seconds. Okay, so we can say that this is how the graph will look for the first 2.5 seconds. Constant, constant acceleration, speed increasing. Okay, the acceleration due to gravity here is 9.8. And then it says... Um, his parachute then opens and causes him to immediately decelerate at a constant rate of 3.9 meters per second squared for t seconds. Okay, so he's going to now, his speed is going, going to decrease for t seconds. So there's a, time, there's a time frame here of t seconds, which we don't know what it is. Okay, we don't know what that time frame is. But there's a time between 2.5 and here. So this is... Basically, this distance here is t, so this is t plus 2.5 seconds. It's 2.5 seconds more than t. All right, that is the value here. And he's, his velocity dropped from 29.5 to v. We don't know what v is, 
but it has to be something low because he's going to hit the ground with that velocity so I'll put it down there so we can say that at that time whoops at that time which we don't know what it is okay we don't know what it is he's going to um, hit the ground he's going to not hit the ground he's going to reach the velocity of v sorry so he's going to go from there to there from that speed to that speed in t seconds okay but what we know is the acceleration of this so the gradient of this line is equal to minus 3.9 okay because he he's his his deceleration is minus 3.9 meters per second or his acceleration is 3.9 meters per second squared means acceleration his deceleration okay um is decelerating that so it's a negative gradient that means okay so that's minus 3.9 uh, is the gradient of that line and then it says he continues at the speed v until he hits the ground so this is just going to continue at this constant speed until he hits the ground and he hits the ground after 20 seconds as it say in second 20 seconds so the whole the total time that he took to hit the ground was 20 seconds that's 20 up to here okay so there we have the speed time graph for part b now for part c of question seven um we have to find the value of t, which is the time for which he was falling uh, or he was um, decelerating after the, between when the parachute opened until he reached his constant speed. That's the t, the value of t. Okay. It says he he then it's um, it says he his parachute opens and causes him to immediately decelerate at a constant rate of 3.9 meters per second for t seconds. So the time of his deceleration is the value of t, and we also know during this deceleration. Um, he's fallen 73.75 meters so that means the area of this trapezium is 73.75 meters and we also know that the the rate of deceleration is 3.9 meters per second squared so we know that the gradient of this line is 3 point minus 3.9 negative because it's decelerating all right so those two pieces of information should help us to find the value of t so first of all let's look at the gradient of the line okay the gradient of the line is the change in y over the change in x but you have to be careful with the signs here because it's, it's it's very easy to mess it up by the sign so i'm going to actually take this as a coordinate t plus 2.5 and v i'll take this as a coordinate 2.5 and 24.5 and i'm going to do the change in y over the change in x i can do either way around um because i've got these these uh letters on this 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 point here i'll use this as my first point and that is my second point, just to make everything easier in terms of algebra. So V minus 24.5 divided by T plus 2.5 minus 2.5, of course, this is, this is a T. But just to get the signs right, I've done it in this way, equals minus 3.9. Don't forget, this is negative. It's a deceleration. Okay, so that will give us an equation. Uh, this will become T under, underneath. You'll have V minus 24.5 is equal to minus 3.9 t so that's like one equation we can use and a second equation we can use is from the fact that we know the area under this this trapezium shape here so the area of a trapezium is given by the distance between the parallel sides divided by two times the sum of the parallel sides so the distance between the parallel sides in this trapezium is t so we have t divided by two times the sum of the parallel sides well the parallel sides are this side here, which is 24.5, plus this side, which is V, which we don't know. But we know that this, this area is equal to 73.75 meters. So from here, we can derive another equation. Um, I can multiply both sides by 2. So I have T times 24.5 plus V equals, that's 2 times 73. That's going to be 146 plus... Um, plus 1.5, 147.5. Let me just make sure of that. 73.75. Whoops, <clears throat> what am I doing? 73.75 multiplied by 2 gives you 147.5 okay so we know we're right there so let me just um, expand this bracket here so you have 24.5 times t which is 24.5 t plus t times v equals 
0.5. So like we have another equation here. Now, with these two equations, I can use substitution. I want to find t, so if I replace the v with what v equals to, and we can see here that v equals, if I just move that out of the way, we can see here that v is equal to 24.5 plus or minus 3.90 minus 3.90. So I can take this v here and replace it with 24.5 minus 3.90. So I have 24.5t plus t times whatever v is, which is 24.5 minus 3.9 t and that's equal to 147.5 now I have an equation with just t's so I can solve and find what t is so I'm going to expand this bracket first I have 24.5 t plus another 24.5 t minus 3.9 t squared equals 147.5 so this is going to give me 48 uh, 49 t so I have 49t minus 3.9t squared is equal to 147.5. If I bring everything to one side to make the t squared term positive, I'll end up with 3.9t squared um, minus 49t and plus 147.5 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation which I can try to solve. Now, to solve this quadratic equation, let's just check if this is going to be kind of friendly. So let's take um, let's take this value and divide it by 3.9, see if it gives us a whole number or something easy. No, actually it doesn't. So I don't think this will become very friendly. Um, so we'll have to use a quadratic formula. So we're going to use a quadratic formula to solve this problem. So in order to use a quadratic formula, let's set it up. We're going to have t equals minus b. So it's minus minus 49 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 49 all squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3.9, times c, which is 147.5, all over 2 times a, 2 times 3.9. So let's see what this gives us. So we've got minus b, so it's 49, positive 49. Let's do the plus first, plus the square root of minus 49 squared, which will be the same as 49 squared, because it's going to get squared, the minus sign, minus 4 times 3.9 times 147.5. 2 times 3 .9. Divided by 2 times 3.9. Okay, so that gives us 295 over 39, which is 7.564. I'll write it like that. 7.564 continues on. It's an exact value, but um, it's not an irrational number. And now we're going to find the other value of t by putting the minus sign in there. So now we put the minus sign instead of the plus over here. Go back. do just before the square root sign and change that to a minus and see what comes out hopefully something nice okay good five all right looks like that's nice five okay so now we can see here um, if we look in the question what it said the wording of the question said that t must be less than six okay so the time has to be less than six so because the time has to be less than six we know that the first solution we can't accept it. Why? Because the time has to be less than 6. Therefore, the time is equal to 5. Okay, 5 seconds. That's the time um, that the parachutist was going or decelerating for this time. So that's 5 seconds. So that means this becomes 7.5 seconds here now. Okay, so we can work out these times. So there's the answer to part um, C. Um, and now we're going to go on to part D. Okay, part D says, find to the nearest meter the height of the point H. Now the height was a total height from the helicopter to the ground. So that's the total area underneath this whole graph. And so what we need now, um, we have T. T is now, we know T is 5. 
So this is 5 plus 7, 2.5, which is 7.5. So I have that. Um, what I need to find the area under the whole graph, this, remember, the area of this was 73.75. So we know this area. We need to find the area of this triangle, which is pretty simple, because we know this is 2.5 and this is 24.5. 24.5. Let me draw it, write it a bit neater. Okay, 24.5. It looks like a 29 there. 24.5. Okay, that's that, that number over here. So the area of this triangle, A, easy to find. The area of this tri rectangle, B, we need to know what V is. Now, we know that T is 5. We worked that, that out in the last question. And because we had a simultaneous equation, I'm pretty sure we can work out what V is now. We got V equals 24.5 minus 3.9T. So V equals 24.5 minus 3.9T. So we know that V equals 24.5 minus 3.9T. So we can work out what V is because we know that T is equal to 5. So this is 24.5 minus 3.9 times 5. And that gives us... Okay, that gives us 24.5 minus 3.9 times 5, which gives you 5 again. Okay, so that V is 5. Okay, so we know this V is also 5. That's 5 meters per second. So we can work out now the area of each of these. So we can say that the H is equal to the area of the first part, which is 2.5 times 24.5 divided by 2 plus the area of the second part, which they already told us was 73.75, plus the area of this last rectangle, which is going to be the distance between here and here, times 5. So it's 5 times 20 minus 7.5. Okay, so that will give us the total, um, the total distance that this person has fallen, this parachute has fallen to the ground. So let me get out the calculator and work that out. Okay, so we have, um, let's just start from the beginning. We have 2.5, whoops, 2.5 multiplied by 24.5 divided by 2. That's a half times the base times the height, the area of the first um, triangle. Then we got 73.75, which we know already. Okay, um, from the first part of the question. And then we got the area of this rectangle, which is um, 5 times, that's going to be 12.5. Anyway, 20, oops, happened here, 73.75 plus 5 times 20 minus 7.5, which is actually 12.5, isn't it? Okay, and that gives us, when I press equals, the height, which is 166.875. So the height is 166.875, which is to the, uh, to the nearest meter, 167 meters. Okay, 167 meters. Okay, so here we have the answer um, put to part D, which is the final part of this question number seven. And um, other questions from this January 2021 M1 paper you can find in the playlist that should appear in this area here. Other questions from this topic of kinematics and travel graphs you can find in the top in the playlist that should appear over here. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle here and on the top of the page you will find a link to another past paper for M1. Thank you for watching. I hope you understood and I hope to see you soon.